Hello my friends, I'm Jazzy and today I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled because I am playing Minecraft for a while and this is the first time in my life that I'm going to explore the end portal. I mean, explore it in survival inside the world that I took time to prepare. It is also my first video that I make in English. I usually make videos in French. So, sorry in advance for the French accent. Without further ado, let's introduce the problematic. We want to localize the end portal, but we aren't going to do it the conventional way. And we are going to do it using really few eyes of hinder. Basically, three or four are fair enough, if more, it is fine. And we'll also need some trigonometry. But don't worry, nothing hard and everything will be explained. We will establish some rules, no cheats, no need to know the seed of the world, and no external tool for help. These are usually the conditions in some servers where we don't have access to this information. I think some of you know what I am going to talk about, but trust me, there is more to know. I will assume that you know the basic use of an eye of the ender. If you stand in a position and you throw it, it will fly in the direction of the nearest stronghold and stop several blocks in front of the player. And usually we follow the indicated direction and repeat the process until the eye of the ender starts going downwards inside the floor. And in order to optimize this, and between two consecutive throws, we may travel several hundreds of blocks. Then, some people came with a clever idea. The principle of the idea is obvious. If the eye of the ender goes towards the stronghold, then it draws a line from my position to the stronghold. Let's say I'm in position A. I throw the eye of the ender and it goes to the position B. The line that passes by the positions A and B should cross the stronghold further away. If the same process is repeated from another position C and the eye of ender flies to position D, then the line that passes from position C and D should also cross the stronghold. The two lines AB and CD should then cross in the position of the stronghold. If their intersection is calculated, then the stronghold is found. So one can say, fine, we found it. But it is unluckily trickier than this. Inside Minecraft, we reason on blocks, and the position we access is the position of the block we are standing on. And unlike points, blocks have thickness, and this thickness lowers the accuracy of the measures, because the stronghold can be on any line that passes by the two blocks. And if we take two blocks, they no longer define a line, but a zone of potential presence. This zone is cone-shaped, and it will be highlighted in yellow on the schematic. And the same thing can be said about the blocks C and D. These two blocks define another zone of potential presence, and both of the zones defined by A, B and C, D contain the stronghold. Thus, the stronghold should be inside the intersection of these two zones. And if we repeat the process from another point of view, we'll be able to shrink in the zone of potential presence. The more we throw the eye of the ender, the smaller is this zone. And of course, the blocks from where the eye of the ender is thrown should be far away from one another in order to have a better accuracy. The method that has been explained here is already used and there are some online sites that can help handle the data given by the player. Well, we don't need to provide world C to the site. We only provide a set of initial positions and the positions where the eye of the ender has moved. The site only makes some calculations based on that and I think it stands legitimate. However, here we are proposing another method that only needs simple calculations and these calculations can be made by hand. So, no external tool is needed. And the accuracy is usually higher of that of the previous method or at least it can be controlled by the player. As we said, two blocks define a zone of potential presence of the stronghold. This zone is big, and we need to make it the smallest possible in order to enhance the accuracy. In order to do that, we can repeat the process from another position, and this is the old method that I have just explained, or the eye of the ender should be thrown further away. If the block on which lands the eye of the ender is far, I let you persuade yourself that the zone of potential presence is smaller, so the accuracy can be higher, and a small change of the distance between the player and the eye of the ender may yield a huge change in the results. 
But how can we throw the eye of the ender further away? Well, we cannot. Once an eye of the ender is thrown, it is not possible to control the distance it goes. But it doesn't matter. We won't be interested in the block it lands on, we will especially be interested in the direction it took. And there will be a problem if we start concentrating on the block it lands on. If we make a test, and we throw several eyes of the ender without changing the position, we notice that they fly to the same position, but do not land on the same block. They act the same way as a block that has been mined, or a cactus or pumpkin that has been uprooted. The item that falls from these blocks land in a random position around them, and this randomness lowers very much the accuracy. And this is the main problem with the old method I presented previously. For the method I am going to present now, we do not have this kind of problem. It is based on the intersection of two lines, but some measures should be taken into account. The general principle of this method can be used for Java Edition or Bedrock Edition, but there is something specific about Java Edition that I am going to explain and that makes the method fascinatingly accurate. Let's start by talking about the measures we should take into account. What I am going to say now can be applied for Java or Bedrock Editions, but in the end, I will talk about something specific to Java Edition. First of all, find the flat area. We will need to move in a straight line and we don't want some obstacle to push us out of this line. In my case, I try to find the deserts around my base where it is easy to find flat areas. You can also try with the plain biomes or also the ocean biome. I didn't try it for the ocean biome, but if you try it and it works, give me a hint. You do not really need your flat area to be wide. You need only to make sure that the passage you are going to move in is flat and without obstacles. The second step is to mark your initial position. You do not need to do it physically, but it helps if it is distinguishable. I marked my initial block with a red wool, and from now on, we will call this the red experience. I gave it this color in order to distinguish it from the blue experience that I am going to do later. The red and blue experiences will define two lines that will intersect in a point and our purpose is to find this point, because this point represents the stronghold. The red wool will be our initial position, and this block is very important. It will be our reference for the red experience. Once you have chosen your initial position, do not move until you throw the eye of the ender. But first, let's write down the position of the red block using the F3 debug screen. We are on the block 314 minus 400. And notice that I took also my precise position on this block. I mean the numbers after the decimal point. We will need this for the calculation specific to the Java edition. Because unluckily, this information isn't available for Bedrock edition players. But it doesn't prevent this method to be accurate for them too. So the initial position is written down. And we will follow the rest of the procedure if the patrol of pillagers in front of me are kind enough to let me work without disruption, but I am not sure. I don't really have a good experience with them, and I am doing this video in survival. I didn't see a lot cheating in this world. Anywho, what I am going to do now is that I am going to throw the eye of the ender and try to point it with the cursor as precisely as possible. It will go quite fast, but once we look towards it, we shouldn't move the mouse and we should start moving forward. This step is crucial, so try to be as precise as possible. I think that it is a bit harder with a joystick, but it is doable if you handle well your joystick. And do not panic if you miss, it is always possible to correct the angle with other eyes of the ender. Anyways, the players in the Java edition do not have access to the joystick, unluckily, but do not hesitate to use Optifine, for example, in order to have a better view of the eye of the ender. So, let's start. Let's throw the eye of the ender, we try to point it with the mouse or with the joystick, and as I said, we can refine the angle by throwing another eye of the ender, like so. Yeah, better. And let's do it another time, just to be sure. So, a third eye of the ender, and I think we are precise enough. Now I don't touch the mouse, and I go forward. The first time, I will move for some blocks, a dozen or 15 blocks, 
and in a second time, I will complete 30 or 40 blocks. You do not need to do this. I will move this time two distances only for the sake of comparison. I will try to show how a bigger distance gives a higher accuracy. Then I write down the current position, 331 minus 393. And we will call the first distance the short throw. And then I continue to a further block. And I write down the second position that corresponds to the long throw. So 348 minus 385. And I also write down the position with the decimals between brackets for the Java edition specificities. It will be used later. I hope that it is well understood that the terms long throw and short throw are only our convention to differentiate the distances we made. The first one is the short distance and the second one is the long distance. But in reality, we do not control the behavior of the eye of the ender. So try to understand well this notion. And for your own applications, you don't need to do two different distances. Now we finish with the red experience and we need to do another experience like this one in order to draw the second line. It will be called the blue experience. The only thing we need to check is that the red line and the blue line are not combined. They should intersect in only one point. So in order to start the blue experience, we need to go a bit far from this place. But we shouldn't go in the direction of the stronghold. We have to go either right or left. In this case, I will go right because my base is situated over there. And I don't want to go far from my base at this time. Just for the sake of illustration, I will try to show you exactly the positions of the red and blue experiences. It is always helpful to visualize it. But again, it isn't something necessary to apply this method. I started the red experience here in this desert and then I moved south towards my base and I continued to another desert further to the south. I found there an ocean biome and as I said, this experience is also possible to do in the ocean because it is big, flat and since Minecraft 1.13 the items can float on the top of the water so we can get back our eyes of the ender. So if you want to make it in the ocean, bring a boat with you. But for this tutorial, we will do the blue experience on the land. I found another desert and I managed to find a flat area. So let's do the blue experience. It will be faster this time. Now we arrived at the place where we are going to start the blue experience. I marked the initial position with a blue wool and we note down the position of this block using the F3 debug screen. And the initial position is at the block 510, 327. As you know, we are only interested in the X and Z positions and we don't care about the Y position. We'll try to keep the same Y level anyways. And as we did previously, we'll also write down the exact position with the decimals and information specific to the Java edition players. You might find it cheaty if you see the result, but it stands legitimate. So let's throw the eye of the ender, like so. We look at it as precisely as possible using the mouse or the joystick. I think I'm precise enough, but I throw a second one for more precaution. Now freeze your mouse, don't change the angle. Oh, the second eye is broken, but no problem. So let's move on forward, like so. So F3 and let's write down the position of the second block which corresponds to the short throw of the blue experience. 524 as X position and 326 as Z position. Then let's continue moving in order to simulate the long throw. I don't see in front of me, better not to fall down from a cliff. So be careful where you stand. And let's write down the position of the long throw, 552 and 323. And I think that's right now we have all the information we need to make the calculations. So see you soon. Oh, I was actually about to fall down. Well, my friends, I'm back home. And I came back with the following table. I hope you understood the mechanics to get this table. It is very crucial to be as precise as possible. For the Java edition players, 
If you have Optifine, for example, you may use the zoom function in order to point out the eye of the ender when it flies. But as you saw, I didn't use this and we will still have results that are precise enough. Now, let's summarize what data we do have. We took the X and Z coordinates of the initial position of the red line. It is the position from where the eyes of the enders have been thrown. These coordinates are noted respectively PX and PZ. The position of the short or long throw is noted EX and EZ. And in order to avoid using many symbols, all the parameters that are related to the red experience will be colored red. And those of the blue experience will be colored blue. Yeah, genius. Well, my niece Maya, who was the first one to introduce me to Minecraft, said that I'm using light blue, not blue. Well, thanks for the remark, Maya. This episode is dedicated to you for your 8th anniversary, with many kisses. So, PX, PZ, EX, EZ for the red and blue, I mean light blue experiences, represents all the data we need to find the stronghold. And these parameters define two lines, the red line and the blue line. And the stronghold is found in the intersection of these two lines. The position of the stronghold is noted SX and XZ, and those are the parameters we need to calculate. For sure, some of you will find this step obvious, but many players among us are young, and they didn't necessarily do the mathematics to find the intersection between two lines. And I'm sure that many of you have forgotten their lessons. So I propose to make a recall, but for those who don't want to follow this step, you will need only one formula in order to find the results. And everything you need will be summarized on one table that I will show you in some minutes. The only thing you need to do is to understand the parameters and the mechanics to get them. So, let's establish the formula ourselves. As we said, we have the coordinates of the initial position, PX and PZ, and the coordinates of a throw, EX and EZ. And, for convenience, we will use vectorial notation. Nothing scary, nothing dramatic. We will just replace the positions PX and PZ by the vector capital P written from these two coordinates. It is just a compact and simpler way to represent these coordinates. As for the throw, it is better to locate it relatively to the initial position, and it will be represented by vector V, which coordinates are EX minus PX and EZ minus PZ. Vector V corresponds to the distance we made from our initial position to one of the throws. And in our case, vector v is worth a displacement of 15 to 20 blocks for the short throw and 30 to 40 blocks for the long throw, just to have an order of magnitude. As for the position of the stronghold, it will be noted capital S, which is the vector written by Sx and Sz, the two coordinates we are looking for. Now, let's check out the red line. If we multiply vector v by a number n, we will get a vector that is parallel to v. It is like if we stretch vector v. And if this vector is added to the initial position p, we will get a point that is on the red line. Therefore, all the points of the red line can be written as p plus n times v. And this is true for some obvious points, if n is replaced by 0, we obtain the initial position p. And if n is replaced by 1, we will obtain the coordinates of the eye of the ender, ex and ez, or what we called the throw. And there is a third obvious value for n. It is the value that corresponds to the stronghold. And we will note this value ns. The only thing is that we don't know yet the value of ns, and this is the purpose of the next calculation. But first, let's talk about the blue line. As you may have guessed, what we said about the red line can be also said about the blue line. All the points that are on the blue line can be written as p plus mv, but this time with the blue parameters, and there is a specific value for m, 
which will note MS that corresponds to the stronghold. So, the position of the stronghold S can be written using the parameters of the red line or the blue line. And all we need to do to find it is to calculate NS for the red line or MS for the blue line. So, let's do that. So guys, all we said until now is that so we can write the position of the stronghold using the parameters of the red line and the blue line. And now we will replace the different vectors with their corresponding coordinates, which can be simplified like so, and we can separate the x and z components in a system of two equations. We have established what we call in mathematics a system of two equations with two unknowns. The unknowns are ns and ms. Well, at the beginning I wanted to stop here because it's just a resolution of the system, but come on, some of us didn't see that. Let's add this step to finish this. So what we are going to do is to isolate ns in the first equation and write it as a function with the other parameters. It is a linear equation, so no roots, no square powers, you should be able to do that. Then we take the expression of ns from the first equation and we replace it in the second equation, like so. And the obtained equation doesn't include the term of ns, it only includes one unknown, the blue ms. And this equation is still linear, so it can be handled to solve for ms. I'll leave the details for you. And when it is solved, we can find the expression of ms. It is a function of the initial position terms and the displacement vectors v from both red and blue experiences. Well, usually in order to solve the system, we should find the value of ns2. But as we said, in order to localize the portal, we need only the value of ms or ns. As we found ms, it is enough for us now. Now, in order to calculate the position of the portal, we should replace the value of ms in the blue equation. And that's it. I presented this calculation for you only to know how simple it is and where the formulas came from. But now, I'm going to summarize what we should really recall in order to apply this method. I will finish with only one table that contains everything you should know. And I'll make an application afterwards with the values we took from the red and blue experience in this video. So, two experiences in two different places, and we write down the coordinates of the initial position px, pz for the red and blue experiences. And also ex, ez, that correspond to the throw of the eye of the ender. The values of the initial position will be used as they are, but for the throw, we should calculate displacement vectors v, so that the throw on eye of the ender is relative to the initial position. Long story short, calculate bx as ex minus px and vz as ez minus pz. And with these parameters, we calculate ms, the expression we established previously. And note that ms isn't just an intermediate value, it has a meaning. It indicates how many times we should repeat the vector v from the initial position p in order to arrive to the stronghold. If, for example, its value is equal to 100, we should walk from the blue initial position in the direction of v 100 times the length of v in order to arrive to the portal or the stronghold. And the last step is to calculate the position of the portal. Sx is equal to px plus mx times vx, and it is the same for sz given by pz plus ms times vz. And guys, this table is everything you need to use this method. Just be careful about the mechanics of the game, look precisely into the eye of the ender when it stops in the sky, when you think you are precise enough, freeze your mouse and go forwards using only the keyboard. Go for several blocks and then take the position. And then all your data is set and you are ready to use this method. Well, my friends, how about an example in order to use the data we had? I will detail the calculations only for the short throw and give you the results for the other throws at the end. So, the initial position for the red experience was at px equal to 314 and pz equal to negative 400. And for the blue experience, px is equal to 510 and pz is equal to 327. And in both experiences, 
For the short throw, we headed towards the eye of the ender with around 15 blocks. And the positions we noted are EX equal to 331 and EZ is equal to negative 393 for the red experience. And for the blue experience, EX is equal to 524 and EZ is equal to 326. And as we said, from vectors P and E, we calculate the vector V. So for the red experience, VX is equal to 331 minus 314, which is equal to 17. And we do the same thing for the other components to find VZ is equal to 7, and for the blue experience, VX is equal to 14, and VZ is equal to negative 1. Now we replace all this data into the formula of MS to find its value that is equal to 95.54. And note here that I kept some decimal points. I didn't use the decimal points of the other numbers because they aren't available for the bedrock edition, but it is important to keep the decimal numbers for MS. Later, I will use the decimal points for the Java edition. It will be our last application in order to show how we can be really accurate. And the last step is the calculation of SX and SZ. And we find the stronghold situated at 1848 and 231. And this is the result for the short throw. I hope that with the small applications, the method is clearer. And now, I will present the results for the long throw. If we repeat the same procedure, and you can use Excel for this, we find the stronghold as position 1704 and 213. So, two different positions of the stronghold. Weird. And that is because the accuracy of the long throw isn't the same as the short throw. It was expected to get different positions. And remember, from the beginning I say that I take the values with the decimal numbers. Let's now present the calculations using these positions with the decimal numbers. And we notice that for both the long and short throws, the position of the portal is at 1730 and 207. Fascinating. Fascinating but also expected. We have the same values because we use precise positions. And we may have the same values even if we move only two blocks from the initial position. As long as we don't touch the mouse, of course. That means that the Java Edition players do not need to find that big flat area in order to make their experiences. Now, let's compare these positions on a map. So, when I left my base, I headed north to make the red experience. It was around 150 blocks far from my base. Afterwards, for the blue experience, I headed south around 200 blocks far from the red experience. I used a tool MCA selector in order to draw this map. And the regions that haven't been yet generated on my world are colored black or gray. And it seems that I haven't been near the stronghold yet. I used an online tool in order to find the chunk of the stronghold for the sake of comparison. It is this chunk highlighted in yellow. And now, let's place the position that has been calculated for the short throw. And as you see, we are some chunks far from the stronghold. But as you know, a stronghold is a big structure and it occupies several chunks. So, even if the position calculated for the short throw is a bit far, it might be within the area of the structure. Or in the worst case scenario, we may need to throw one or two more eyes of the ender in order to get the exact position. Now, let's see the position calculated for the long throw. And as expected, it is more accurate and the predicted position is closer to the stronghold. It is only one chunk far, so it is definitely inside the structure of the stronghold. So even if you are playing in the bedrock edition, you can get this precise. And now behold, for the Java edition players, if you use the decimal position, you can get this accurate. We are inside the official chunk of the stronghold. The only thing that can alter this precision is your mouse. And, more than this, you can achieve this precision if you move only two blocks from your initial position. Difficult to do better than this without activating cheats. And if you are on Bedrock Edition, you didn't miss a lot. You can also achieve respectable accuracy. 
Well, my friends, I will call the episode here. I hope this method is worthwhile. Its mechanics are obvious, but weirdly, I haven't seen many players using the exact position in Minecraft. So here is one of the cases where it is useful in survival. And if you play on servers, do not hesitate to use it. It will give you a considerable advantage at the early world. Especially that at the beginning, it is difficult to obtain many ender pearls. And if you play with teams, you can do for example the red experience and one of your teammates can do the blue experience at the same time. So let me know if you like this idea and if you like detailing the mathematical parts. Thank you for your reactions and your support. It has been Jazzy et à la prochaine. Au revoir. Thank you.